What's going on everybody? It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and I've been receiving a ton of comments where players are hitting an in-game wall somewhere around CT level 10, and for many of them, they are simply not able to break through. Now this could be down to a multitude of factors, most of which I'm going to be covering today, and there's a little something for every skill level of player in today's video. But before we begin today's video, I would again like to convey my thanks for all the love you have been showing my Outriders uploads. I mean, the response has been phenomenal, and I'm still stunned at how fast my channel has been growing. So again, thank you. Now, just in case you haven't yet smashed that sub button, please do so. And don't forget to ring the bell to never miss a future upload notification from my channel. Now, today's video is a bit longer than usual, so I will leave timestamps in the video description and in my pinned comment for easy reference. And let's get this one going. Okay, so you've been doing pretty well as you progress up through those first challenge tier ranks with the same build you ended the campaign with, save a few minor changes, and then all of a sudden you bump up to another challenge tier rank and immediately start getting wrecked. And you're sitting there trying to apply logic to the situation, like, I was doing fine five minutes ago, but now I'm super squishy and I can't do any damage. Believe me, I know just how you feel, and that's why I will do my best to list out anything and everything I can think of for you to try so that you can bust through that wall and make it to the end of the challenge tiers. First up is something that seems so basic, but I still see players getting caught making this error because it makes no sense how it works in the game. What I'm speaking of is item level, which is displayed on every piece of gear and weaponry that you have, and you can see it in the top right hand corner of your gear and weaponry pop-ups. Now what Outriders does not tell you is that there are hidden stats that affect every portion of your build baked into each gear piece and your weaponry. Just as an example, watch as I toggle between my normal level 50 assault rifle on my Techno build over to a level 37 LMG, and what you want to pay attention to is my top line stats. Now you would naturally expect my firepower rating to go down as there is a 13 level difference between the two items, but watch my health and anomaly power as well. It makes absolutely no sense that health and anomaly power are attached to weaponry because those are gear stats, but in this game, every piece of gear can help or hurt all your overall stats. So the first thing I would do if you were hitting that challenge tier wall is to take a look at your gear and then determine if you were using the absolute maximum gear level that you currently have unlocked. If you're unsure what your max is, click on the stats tab at the bottom left hand portion of your character inventory screen and then look at the very top of that pop up for the max wearable item level. If you are at say a level 45 and you do not have all level 45 gear equipped, you are instantly handicapping your character strengths across the board. Maybe you have one piece of gear that is several levels lower than your allowable max or one weapon that I know nobody pays attention to is your sidearm. What level is it? Even if the gear you are capable of equipping is not perfectly matched to your build, it will still put you on an even playing field with the content you are now attempting. Watch as I jump back and forth between these two different gloves. One is a level 45 and the other is a level 50. Now naturally you would think that my armor and firepower are going to change because the level 50 gloves are fully upgraded and have higher levels of both. But watch my anomaly power and even my health can change as I toggle between these two gloves. And both of these gloves have zero attributes or mods that are directly tied to either of those stats. But here they are changing. Through basic experimentation and using my character at a level 50, as long as the gear was within at least four levels of my max, it seemed to stop affecting indirect stats. For example, once I took those gloves from a level 45 to 46, they stopped affecting anomaly power and health while still adjusting firepower and armor, which they naturally should. Just jumping back and using that sidearm example, watch me switching between a level 50 and level 42 sidearm, and I will lose nearly 2,000 points of health, which makes absolutely no sense because this is a weapon and it features no talents, attributes, or mods that should affect health. So make sure to check all your currently equipped gear and match it to your current highest available wearable item level, even if it is not perfectly matched to your build concept, so that you can start setting yourself up for higher CT clears as you push towards the hardest difficulties. Okay, next item to throw out there is the horrible multiplayer shortfalls this game has. 
I'm sorry, I'm not trying to push its nose into the sand, but oh my god does Outriders lack in the multiplayer experience. Not only can it prove terribly laggy, but many times when I do enter multiplayer, my latency spikes through the roof. I will get shot by enemies that haven't even yet peeked from behind cover on my screen, but there they are pushing damage on me and I have nothing to shoot back at. But possibly the worst item about multiplayer is the fact that many of your mods and effects do not work in this game mode. And this one really stings, especially if you have been putting in the time to grind out those gear pieces with the right attributes and then you're taking your chances at the mod station with Dr. Zahidi. Then you go and play multiplayer only to find out that several of them don't seem to ever proc or register that you have them on your builds. For example, for me on my Toxic Techno build, whenever I go into multiplayer, Toxic Lead, the mod I use to replenish my mag, and that procs through killing targets afflicted with Toxic, simply doesn't register. So even though I am crushing targets and applying Toxic, my blighted rounds run out, and I end up having to wait for them to come back off of cooldown. Now in this case, Trick Up the Sleeve, which is a tier 1 Techno class mod, seems to work much better, but you get where I'm going here, right? You spend all this time searching and farming for the best gear, then you go through the mod process thinking that you've got something really special only to enter multiplayer and see your hopes crushed when several of your mods don't even function. So here's my advice to you and it's going to come in several different levels. First, I would try to avoid multiplayer on CT content if possible. Or, and this is my second point, at least try to coordinate with your squad so that everyone is using different builds. Two Technos vying for kills, both trying to use Toxic Lead will lead to your squad getting wiped very quickly when they both lose Blighted Rounds and become very mortal. Now I've also encountered issues with mods like Vampiric Mag or mods that are procced by landing critical strikes like Vein Ripper, Reforging Bullets, and I would like to say that I do have my doubts about mitigation from death and just how accurate it registers kills when aiming down the sights. But, not all the mods not functioning correctly produce negative effects. Even now, emergency stance procs and then the rock golem incoming damage reduction stays active, even after the rock animation has worn off. So I am still using it on my builds until it is fixed. Also included in this online discussion are several issues that I wanted to mention with netcode and just how wonky it can get. I have been in numerous play sessions where I have noticed that when a fast moving target is running perpendicular to my position and I aim and fire at that enemy, the bullets do not register as hitting that target. I've watched them back on slow mo and my aim is spot on. The reticle is directly on that target, but it's like the bullets are hitting nothing but air. Also, there are times when I start shooting at a static target, like when the insurgents take cover and then peek their heads up to look around. I put my reticle directly on their heads, fire, and the bullets end up going towards a different area than I'm even pointing at. It's not too far off, but it is clearly not where my reticle is aimed. Now with this being said, I have started adjusting my playstyle to a more linear approach and if you were experiencing these same issues, hear me out. Wasting rounds on a fast moving target while standing out in the open taking incoming damage can quickly get you killed and ultimately super frustrated. Instead, I've actually stopped shooting at those targets that make those hard angle advances and instead, I let them get to their chosen areas where they will normally stop running and then turn to face me. And that is when I aim for their heads and down them. There are more factors involved with accuracy like are you moving or stationary, but the main point here is that you need to try to go directly at your targets in straight lines to ensure the best accuracy. I don't know if we can call it server lag, desync, or just inaccurate netcode, but if you want to avoid getting folded while shooting phantom targets, try out this tactic I just spelled out for you. Let's keep this online squad play discussion going, and I know that I said that I wanted you to try to tackle CT content solo if possible, mainly due to the mods not working in group play, but if you are still struggling, there is absolutely no shame in just asking for help. Maybe it just comes down to time constraints or some other factors that are affecting your gameplay. I frequently help others that need a little boost to get them over the top and luckily Outriders is completely cross-play enabled so I can just play on my PC with others on their consoles and vice versa. Now if you were wanting to take this route, the first place I would recommend you start is on Discord. And I have my own community Discord server already set up that is available for you to use as a tool to assist you. Now, since there is no in-game communication in Outriders, I highly recommend you start using this free tool to jump into voice comm rooms so that you can communicate and plan amongst the squad. 
check in this video description for an open invite to my Discord server where all you need to do is acknowledge the rules and you are instantly a member. Once there, you can post in the Outriders LFG channel, find others to squad up with that can play at your most convenient times. Plus, I have plenty of open chat rooms, so you can hop in there and squad chat during the missions. If that is a bit too much in terms of commitment, you can always find Twitch streamers in the directory offering assistance for CT clears while they stream. Now, I haven't been able to personally stream this past month due to IRL obligations, but I hope to resume next week, and I will be offering this service, and I can personally recommend others like Macho, DJ Tickle, Capo, and Pwnstar, to name a few. All you need to do is join in their streams, add your name to their waiting list, and they will bring you into the squad, help you with whatever CT mission you need, and it is done. Now, if you are interested in taking that route, I will leave links to not only my Twitch channel, but all the others I just mentioned, and make sure to tell them that I referred you. At this point, you've checked over your gear, and maybe you found one piece that was many levels behind your current max wearable rank. You also understand that certain mechanics of squad play, namely the mods, will not function and will therefore hold back your CT progress. You've also got free resources like Discord and Stream to find someone to help get you over that hump. And this now brings me to the final part of this video and it's all about crafting your CT build. Now I personally don't recommend you start nailing this down until you're near the end of your CT grind, unless, and here is a big disclaimer, you have found some perfect pieces of gear that you have managed to mod to exactly what you want as you look ahead to hitting rank 50. Up to that point, you should probably concentrate on just equipping the highest level items that can keep you alive during whatever CT rank you were attempting. My first recommendation for this build inspection, and this is just my personal observations, but what I tend to find is that players that are struggling to get up through those CT 13, 14, and 15 missions tend to use way too many survivability mods on their gear. On one hand, they don't seem to die quickly, but on the flip side, they don't have near enough firepower, enough DPS to down the enemies. So what ends up happening is they attack and then kite, attack then kite, and eventually they just get swarmed over from all directions and die. In Outriders, the best defense is an overwhelming offense, and it really flies in the face of logic and what you would typically be accustomed to in a standard looter shooter. We've all been trained that when the bullets start flying, you need to take cover and proceed tactically. But in this game, it is the exact opposite. We are healed through killing, and for this, we need lots and lots of firepower to just simply overwhelm our targets. Here, let me show you what a decent ratio of offense to defense should look like. And in this segment, those of you ground and pound devastators may choose to follow this, and you may not. It's up to you. Now, this is my pyro tank build that is focused into anomaly power, status effects, and an overwhelming melee attack. I can literally stand toe to toe with CT15 brood mothers, behemoths, and every other enemy type in this game, and I'm virtually unkillable because I am using the right combination of class points, skills, and mods. But as you start to look at my gear, and more specifically those mods, I'm only using two survivability mods. That's it. And in reality, that's all you need. Now, there's some better options in the tier 3 mod library, but since this build was used to showcase tier 2 mods, I am only using Bullet Absorber and Emergency Stance, and that frees up the other 8 mods to use for whatever I wanted, and my recommendation is you go into damage. Now I've had several people that are in that grouping of trying to make it to the CT15 content and they've hit that wall, and they've sent me screenshots of their builds, and the one similarity I am seeing is that they are too heavily invested into survivability mods. If you are killing targets, you are healing, and if you are running a majority of sustain mods that give you bonus armor and regen, you are wasting potential damage output. Why spend your valuable mod slots to overinvest into sustain when the game is literally built around damaging and killing targets for sustain? So here's the recommendation. Pick a few sustain mods and you can have those on your gear, but you don't need four or five of them when you only have 10 very valuable mod slots. Again, just using my pyro tank build example, with just the two survivability mods, I then had eight mod slots that I used to increase my anomaly power, melee damage, and status effects damage over time, like toxic burn and ash, so that I could burn down targets with that high damage over time. Now, I've personally seen pyro builds with emergency stance, damage absorber, protection of the flames, mitigation from death, and then for good measure, they're also using feed the flames to grab even more health. Once again, 
If you were in this group, you don't need this much sustain on your builds. Pick a couple, like the two that I constantly use, emergency stance and or bullet absorber, and then just go full into either anomaly power, depending on your build, or into bonus firepower paired up with status effects that create tick damage over time. To end up this video, I would like to throw out one quick bonus nugget of information, and it would be, whatever you do, you should not be taking cover. Never, never, ever. This doesn't mean you can't stand behind a piece of cover and strafe back and forth, but you should not be running up and attaching to cover, which will make you crouch. This is not a cover shooter game, and if you're going to be taking my advice and reinvesting your mods into offensive damage, you need to play aggressive and push to survive. Also, the very second you attach to cover and begin to kneel down, the insurgent enemies will immediately zero in on your position and lob grenades, javelin strikes, or other anomaly barrages directly on top of your heads. Hopefully these items will help you push through and break down that wall that is keeping you from progressing up to CT-15. If you need tips and tricks as to how to improve your gear and what gear you should be farming, I posted a guide on Tuesday outlining exactly how you can plan, farm, and mod your perfect build in a fraction of the time. And in case you want to see that video, I'll leave a link to it in the video description. If you have any questions about this video, please leave me a comment and I'll do my best to answer them promptly. If you haven't yet smashed that sub button for more intensive Outriders content, please do so. And don't forget to ring the bell to receive all future upload notifications from my channel. If you could take the time to rate and or share this video, it would be greatly appreciated. Don't forget to find me over on Twitch, join my community Discord server to discuss all things Outriders related, and of course, follow me on Twitter, posting on most things gaming related. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.